you seem pretty, you know, emotionally intelligent, um, pretty sensitive to women's issues. Obviously, you wouldn't be able to have put your brand together if not. Um, do you think that in a in a dating marketplace that those men, I guess men like you, I don't know if we can use you specifically because um, you kind of have that balance, but men with that position, do you think they garner respect from black women in the dating market marketplace? Like, let's just, men like a Derek Jackson. Do right, you think like a Derek Jackson. And let's respect. take away his, how big he is, you know? No, I mean, it is what it is. Okay, well, yeah, like a wanna, Derek Jackson, yeah, let's not take it away. He's, he's earned his name being involved in certain conversations. Yeah, well, I mean, I would look at a Derek Jackson picture, ne like, not knowing what comes out of his mouth and be like, he looks like a pretty masculine man. Yeah, okay. But then, like, you know, he's so, talking. So you mean, as far as his position on the, does that position garner respect from that black women? sensitivity, you know Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Okay. I think it garners more respect than the manosphere. Okay. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Even though the manosphere calls him simp and he's a panderer and this and that. But that's what pandering gets you. Mm. Like, there'll be no point of pandering if it didn't get you the love and respect of the people you're pandering to. Mm -hmm. So, um, absolutely. <laughs> Like telling somebody what they what they want to hear is always going to put you in their good grace. Okay. Do you think that telling and I'm not pushing back on you because no. I love that brand. I think it's dope. You've worked really hard. But do you think that that pandering has helped black women in seeing the reality? Because like you said, they get lost in the sauce. They yes. don't leave. I do think it's helped. I absolutely I've been a part I've that would be like me saying I haven't helped. I think I've helped. I think I think Derek Jackson has helped. I think people who who um, inspire women every day to pick up the pieces and move on have helped. The problem is not in telling them to do these things. The problem is in them overdosing on these things. Like I said, too much of everything is is not good. You know what I mean? So Derek Jackson is she's absolutely helped. But a Kevin Samuels has also helped too. And I think the fact that people would try to discredit people like a Kevin Samuels and say he hasn't helped is unfair because there are there's an audience they need to hear what he's saying the same way there's an audience that needs to hear what Derek Jackson is saying. He's helping the people who need his help. No different from Kevin Samuels is helping the people that need his like, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're, everyone doesn't need the same treatment. You understand? You do, we don't all need the same treatment. So I think they're both very necessary. I agree. I agree. And I think that with our society, we are very fixated on absolutes. Yeah. If something's good, then it's good. And if it's bad, then, then, then it's, it's bad. bad. And there's no balance between the two. And maybe we don't have the emotional intelligence to take what we need from those different pockets and use it, you know, like we did in school. Yeah. Um, so I 100% agree with that, for you, has your sexuality ever come into question when you didn't act stereotypically masculine or when a woman disagreed with you? Absolutely. Like, absolutely. I think, um, <laughs> and even, and the answer to both, like, because there's kind of two questions there. Yeah, there's the, for sure. Um, didn't fit and then the, the disagree. Yeah. Didn't fit, yes. Disagree, also yes. And didn't and I actually had this conversation from less than forty eight hours ago, and we were talking about how the black male masculinity is the most fragile thing in America, mm -hmm. like literally the most fragile thing in America. Because if you don't fit into the mode of what, and typically the mode is street, okay. the mode for black men is street hood. hood. Give you an example. Yeah. If you're in the mall. And a white man walks past you with a suit on. You don't think anything of it. If you're in a mall and a black man walks past you with a suit on, why does he have a suit on? Like, is, what's wrong with a black man wearing a suit? You understand what I'm saying? So not being street as a black man has already raises an eyebrow. Like, why are you not street? You're not black enough. So 
I definitely get, I, I live in Baltimore and I definitely don't dress like the dudes in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. I don't talk street. I never try to, you know, be a street person. Like that's far from who I am. So absolutely. Like I, <laughs> like that's, that's, that's common for me. Um, and as far as a uh, black man being questioned, if he doesn't agree, I think look at any black man who's ever said anything that black women didn't agree with. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't stay out of black women's conversation, it's, if you want to be a black woman, just say that. Or you, he secretly like men because why is he talking? Like you have to be gay. Right. You, you know like saying? that's like, always the go-to. It's always the go-to. Like the black male masculinity is the most fragile thing in America. Black women will throw that card out so fast because they feel it's the most offensive thing they can call a straight black man is gay. Like if there's nothing that there's nothing that can hit harder than that. So I if I let's talk gay, about that then. It's gonna, How does that make you feel? Because I'm sure this you've experienced that before. Yeah, I think yeah. every black man probably has. How does that make you feel? Um for the black women listening. How does that make me personally feel? How did, or how did that make you feel? I'm so that? I'm so high on who I am. That, okay, let me give you, I'll, I actually have a perfect story for this, right? I walk into a strip club with one of my friends, um, one of my homeboys, right? He's just, he's fresh off of work. He works in D.C., corporate, corporate job. So he's like in Thai, you know, slacks, whatever. He's like in corporate work attire. So we go into a strip club. We're chilling. Like, we're not being rowdy. Like, it's a bunch of hood people in the strip club as well. We're not being rowdy. We're chilling. We, you know, kicking and shit, drinking, just being calm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he tries to, like, you know, do what niggas do at strip clubs. Like, he talking to this stripper, like, kicking his worst game ever. Um, and so she goes, oh, y'all not together? And he's like, yeah, we came here together. Like, what you mean? She's like, nah, like, I thought y'all were, like, together. Like, like gay. Did she give you a reason? I'm getting to that. So he goes, man, hell no. So he goes, no, but out of curiosity, like, why would you even, you know what I'm saying? So no bullshit. This is what she said. She said, well, you in here, you dress like, you know what I'm saying? Like you got a good job. And then you're not, you know, you're not talking to me like with a lot of slang and stuff. So he's like, that can't be it. So she, this her follow-up question was, do you got any kids? He was like, nah. She was like, oh, you got to be gay. And mind you, I'm not in the conversation, but I'm eavesdropping because I, I, I want to hear it. Like, I want to hear what, like, what's going on. And she literally says, you got a good job. You don't got no kids out of marriage. And um, what was the last thing she said? Oh, like, yeah, you're dressed like in like corporate, corporate whatever attire. She like, something got to be wrong with you. Yo, and he got so upset, and I looked at him, I said, bro, you got to understand, it's not even her fault. Like, she's conditioned to feel like a, there's only one way a black man can be. A straight black man. Yeah, there's only one way a straight black man can be. And I was like, bro, you can't even, because I've heard it more than once. So at some point, something my, my, um, my sister said to me, um, registered, like you don't get mad at somebody who's mentally challenged for showing that they're mentally challenged. Like they can't help themselves. And I was like, yo, you can't get mad at him, mad at her for thinking this because she's conditioned to think this. Like she doesn't know any better. This is all she sees is what she's been taught. She was a blank canvas when she came into this world. This is the information that was fed into her. So it's not really her fault. Now, hopefully at some point in life, she will leave her little neighborhood and she'll see more. And she'll realize that black men are not, you know, are not a monolith. You understand what I'm saying? But yeah, like black men get called (laughs) everything, gay and everything for just not being, you know, this, this mode of black male masculinity in America. You think that if that was two white men, she would have thought the same thing? Nobody bats an eye when white men walk in with corporate attire and talk and talk like they have a college education no one bats an eye at that it's you're supposed to dress that way 
as a white man and speak properly. But as a black man, you're not. And to be clear, these, this idea of black male masculinity is pushed more by black women than it is by black men. If we're being honest, I have a lot of, like, I, again, I live in Baltimore. I got hood friends. I got friends that sell drugs. I got friends that scam. I got friends from all walks of life. And none of them push this idea of black male masculinity. It's typically women. So what is masculinity to you? <laughs> I'll tell you what it's not. It's not how you talk. It's not how you dress. Masculinity is... Handling what you're supposed to handle as a man, first of all. Like, and then it goes back to basic instincts. High stress situations, how do you react? Are you a protector? Are you a provider? You understand what I'm saying? Like, do, goes back to the, the double standards that I said life is about with gender roles. I don't think... I don't think masculinity is what kind of music you listen to. You understand what I'm saying? Like if I want to drive down the street with Taylor Swift blasting, I shouldn't be looked at like, yo, that you, you got to be gay. Why are you listening to Taylor Swift? I like that song. Classic, red lips, but I like it. That's my shit. It gets heavy rotation. You understand what I'm saying? But masculinity in the black community, like it's so... We'll be having this conversation all day. So, I don't know. On your page, Poetic Styles, mm -hmm. um, you post a range of different things. I want you to talk a little bit more about the reaction you get when you post sexual content versus non-sexual content. And why you think one might get more attention than the other. Start there. Um, even when I was a poet, like, not even when I was a poet, when I was a younger poet, when I was coming up, before I was on Instagram, when, back when I would do open mics, I realized that sexual poems from, like, the other poets were, like, almost like an easy way to get a reaction. It was like a cheat code. I never had a sexual, I never did a sexual poem, like, Every time I perform, I, I've never, till this day, I've never written a sexual poem because I felt like it's such, a, it's such an easy way to get a reaction out of people. Like, especially in this day and age, I feel like everything is hypersexualized. Um, I just think everything is just sex, 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 like literally everything. Um, so, I mean, naturally, if I post a meme that's, centered around sex or in any way, shape, or form, it garners, um, res you know, a quicker response than the other ones or whatever else that I, m I might post. Um, but that's, again, that's just where we are. Um, I don't think that's something any of us have control over at this point. I think there's been, with the whole women empowerment thing that I feel like a lot of things get shoved under that umbrella that shouldn't necessarily be under that umbrella. Um, that's where we are. You know, I always say all the time, have you noticed that, <sighs> and this might be a controversial thing to say, have you noticed that a lot of times women tend to be the ones on Instagram talking about sex more than men. Like, if I had a dollar for every time I heard a woman brag about her vagina or how wet it was and how was the... First of all, I've never met a woman who didn't think her vagina was the wettest thing ever. But I tend to see that more often than men. Like, I've never seen a post where a man is just on Instagram bragging about the size of his penis or what his penis, like, I don't, we don't see that. Men don't get on Instagram talking about my dick is gold. But women tend to, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I often see women bragging about their vagina. 
Like that's a common trend. And <laughs> I think women, it's just become a more, more of a topic for women than even for men, sex. Why? You know, I'm gonna have to ask why. Why do you think, you why know what I, I mean by that? Why do I think that? Why do you think that women are on, you know, on social media talking about their, um, how, their what, quote unquote? To be fair, for the reason that men get on Instagram and talk about their money and their lifestyle. I feel like they, that's, that's what they want to lead with. Sure, I mean, I guess. Um, yeah, um, you know. You think, what side do you think is more harmful? If, I guess we just did say it was an equal comparison. Do you think I that? I don't think it's harmful if you get the results that you want. I think it's counterproductive when you do it and then complain about the results. Like, for instance, a man leading with his money and then getting back on that same social media and saying, damn, man, I mean, women only want to date me for my money. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's what you're leading with. So it would be the same as a woman who's on social media all the time bragging about her vagina and then saying, getting back on said social media and saying, these niggas in my DMs just want to fuck. Um, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I feel like it's only harmful when you complain about what comes with it. Now, if you're getting the results that you want, man, you know, keep doing your thing. It's not harmful. Who is it harming? Post whatever you want. So Yeah, black people, I think that we need to learn consistency. And if we are, as a collective, want to say... We want to be better and black lives matter and, you know, all, you know, all the, all the negative stuff that they want to get on Instagram and preach, then we have to hold women that go and talk about their WAP or men that are just flashing money and being negligent. They got three kids at the crib with three different baby mamas. Yeah. We have to hold them accountable. For sure. So there's no like picking and choosing when we want to find it cute and when we don't. Yeah. Um, now, let me ask you, because you don't, you wouldn't make sexual content. I wish I could like see it, but you don't, wouldn't make sexual poetry if you didn't feel like there was a place for sexuality within the feminine aura. No, it wasn't that. I just didn't make it because I wanted to challenge myself. Mm. Again, I, I knew if I wrote a sexual poem, it's, it's going to be an easy win. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I saw the worst poems, get, the worst poets get on stage and say the worst sexual poem. And the only reason they got a reaction was because it was sexual. Like, if they just get on there and say how they're going to, how they love eating vagina, it's going to get a reaction. It can be the shittiest poem ever, but it's going to get a reaction from women. That's easy. I want to challenging myself to be more creative than that. You know what I mean? So that was the reason I never did it. It wasn't because I thought it was no place for it. No, I, I mean, I, I performed in front of an, in front of adults. So it, it, there was definitely a place for it. Um, I just didn't, I just didn't want to do it for my personal reason. Okay. All right. Well, this is going to be the last question. I'm going to kind of tie it into the topic we were talking about, what kind of son or daughter you want to, you plan, do you plan to raise? So if you were to have a daughter, what would you say to her if she was the type of woman who felt as though putting her walk on Instagram was cute? What would you like, if you were to her dad and you sat down, sat on the bed, what would you say to her? I would, t I would tell her how men think. I think um, as a father, the kind of father that I want to be, I don't want to be the father that makes decisions for my children. I want to be the father that gives them all this information so that they know what comes with whatever decision they make, whichever route they go, and then they can make that decision for themselves. Like, this is what comes with that. Because at the end of the day, when they leave your house, that's what they're going to do. They're going to make decisions for themselves. So it's best that you give them all the information 
all the shit that people don't like tell you. You know what I mean? Because there's a lot of shit that information that I've, that, that I've realized that women didn't have growing up. And that's why they don't understand men like at all. You know what I mean? So, which goes back to men not even being in a household to even tell their daughters these things. Like, this is how men think. Like, you can do this, but this is gonna, gonna, what's going to come with that. And I think that's important. Like, if you want to show your booty off online and, you know, that's cool. That's fine. If you want to do that or at a certain age, that's cool. But I'm going to give you all this information so you know what comes with that. And then, you know, when you become a young adult, you make your own decisions. But I can't make your decisions for you. you. It's your life, you got, but you gotta live with what comes with whatever. And that that would be the same for my son. Like, this is what comes with this. Men are gonna look at you like this or they're gonna look at you like that. Is black love a worthwhile pursuit? Absolutely. I don't care how hard this shit get, man. I love love. I love black women. I think this shit is absolute. Because if not, then what is? You understand? Like, your job that you wanted, your dream job, you applied to a lot of different companies. You didn't get one. You kept going. You kept, you kept applying. You kept sending your resume out because you felt a job was worth it. Why don't you think your potential partner is worth it? I think it's absolutely worth it. I feel like love is the one thing that you got to, Always get up and try again because all it takes is one. Your happy ending is one successful relationship away. Always. So I feel like it's absolutely worth it. I think it's the one thing nobody should ever give up on. Like, absolutely not. Like, no. And I also think people should stop trying to take five years to heal. Speed that process up because our time on earth is limited.